Being able to stick your hand through walls or doors is a very common issue that you see in a lot of VR games, especially multiplayer games that can even be a little bit more competitive. Say you wanted to stick your hand through a wall while holding a weapon or some other objective item and you, want, and you decide to either try and let go of that objective item or you've decided to shoot or somehow otherwise kill an enemy through a wall without actually being able to see them just knowing that they're there. Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you a very simple way we can actually check to see if players are sticking their hands through a wall by checking to see if our hand and our head have some kind of wall in between them, allowing for us to check and have a very simple solution to this problem. But before we go ahead and jump into that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like this one, be sure to like up the subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so let's go ahead and check out this how this works. So I have these two walls here uh, on either side of me. Uh, each of these are actually a little different. I'll explain why in just one second. Um, uh, these are also a little bit short, and uh, something that I that actually makes this really good, the fact that they're short, is we'll actually be able to see that our hands being detected on another side of a wall. Um, now these are different as well, like I said. This one does not have the tag that we're going to be setting up in this tutorial to detect if it's a wall. And the reason we're actually using tags in order to help us detect that is because sometimes we have things that aren't necessarily walls that can get in the way and that we really don't want to trigger our, um, our don't shoot or don't interact or you know whatever we need to do. Um, so, for, for example, if, if you're in like a shooter and there's like a little sliver of grass that happens to be sitting between your head and your hand, that's obviously a really big issue and you don't want that to be not allowing you to shoot in that scenario. So anyways, let's go ahead and check this out. So over here, this left one has no tag to it, so I can stick my hand on the other side of it and as you can see, nothing's happening uh, as far as you can tell at least. Um, so there is actually a line trace going between my head and my hand to detect if there is a wall, or really anything between um, b between my hand and my head. This is actually using a multi-trace as well. Um, again, for the same scenario, we don't know if there's going to be other things in the way. Um, if you had like a bush up against a wall and so and you're sticking it through that bush, could end up interfering with a single line trace. So this is actually a multi-line trace, so it'll actually pick up everything between your head and your hand, and it'll check them all to see if they have the wall tag. Now over here on the other hand, this wall actually does have the wall tag, and this one can actually detect if our hand is on the other side of the wall. So if I actually stick my hand on the other side, there we go. So you can actually see, we, we get this little sphere here that shows that my hand was being picked up on the other side. And you can actually see it's as my hand starts going over the other edge here. And same with my left hand as well. There we go. Um, now, th this does do a bit of a weird thing, the, the, way, that it's the way that it shows where it's detecting. Um, and I think that this is worth bringing up too in case you have like taller walls and you're not sure if it's picking up or not and you're trying to do a sphere like this. So this actually, if, if I were to like lean down and put my hand on the other side, you can actually see it goes to the opposite side of the wall. So it'll actually, this sphere, our impact point is going to hit either the other side of the wall or a hand, whichever one comes first. So you can actually see if I bring my hand just a little bit closer here. Um, I actually don't even know if I'm still in the camera. I'm barely. <laughs> um, if I bring my hand a little bit closer, you'll actually see the. it's now going to wherever my hand is. But if I push my hand all the way through, it's now just going to stick on the other side of that wall. It's not going to go all the way to my hand. It's whatever's first, um, which gives us a pretty good idea of whether or not we're, uh, we're getting hit or, or whether or not we're hitting a wall. We just won't be able to see it if we stick our hand all the way through. And that's something that you definitely want to keep in mind if you're going to be using something like I'm doing here with a sphere trace. Um, or even if you're checking your line trace, it'll also do the same thing where it'll pin it on the other side of that wall. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to test this and you're just not really sure if it's working or not. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial now and I can show you exactly how all this is done. Let's start by having a look at our level real quick. As you can see, our level here has two walls, two very simple static meshes. Now I haven't done anything to these. These are just simply cubes that I placed in the level and scaled up so that way they took up a little bit more room and I could work with them just a little bit more easily. 
Now, because there's a lot of different objects that are able to be collided with and we're able to line trace, we want to make sure that only walls are going to be line traced. So to do this, we're going to add in a very simple solution and add a tag to one of these walls. Once this is all complete, go ahead and open up your VR pawn or any other VR character that you are using. Once you have your pawn or any other character that you have open, we need to create a function. This function will allow for us to detect if there's a wall between our head and our hand and therefore help us detect if our player is sticking their hand through a wall. Now before we start any work on adding in any blueprints into this function, let's go ahead and set up one input and one output real quick. The input that we want to add in is going to be whatever our hand is. In this case, I'm using the VR pawn, so I'm going to use a motion controller. But if you're using a different character or a different pawn, you may find that something like a static mesh or a skeletal mesh may be a little bit more suitable to you. Now we're also going to need a single output to this function. This output is going to tell us if, our, if we have a wall in between our hand and our head. So this is simply going to be a boolean and I'm just going to call this is wall. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started to detecting if there's any wall. To do this, go ahead and import our camera into this function. And then we need to check, get the world location of both our camera as well as whatever our hand is. Like I said, I'm using a motion controller, so I'm going to get the world location of the motion controller. But if you're using some other type of mesh or something else altogether, then you want to get the world location of this component. Then using these world locations, we're going to need to do a couple things. First, let's find the fine look at rotation between these two components. Next, we also need to get the distance between these two world locations. So go ahead and simply get a distance vector between these two values. Now we need to multiply both of these two values that we just got. In order to do this, we're actually going to need to convert this to a vector as well. So go ahead and go up to your rotator where we found our look at rotation, and we're going to want to get the forward vector, which will transfer our rotator into a vector that we're able to more easily use. Once you have this forward vector, go ahead and multiply it by the distance float value that we just got as well. With that, we have everything that we need to actually get started. We, we will need to do one or two more steps as well, but we'll come back to that in just one second. Go ahead and run a multi-line trace by channel. Now in this multi-line trace, we first need to add in a start value. This start value should be the exact same as whatever you added in for the start of your fine look at rotation. In this case, I use my hands world location as the start value. So go, I'm going to go ahead and pass that through into our multi-line trace by channel. Then finally for the end value, we're going to go ahead and take that same world location, whichever one we just took and fed into the start, and we're going to add that to our vector that we found earlier. Once you've done this, go ahead and get the out hits of your multi-line trace by channel and go and pass that into a for each loop. We're gonna use this in order to go through and check every single thing that we hit between our hand and our head. In the for each loop, go ahead and get the out hit result and break this. We're going to need both the actor that we hit as well as the component that we hit, since in some cases our actor or our component may have this tag. Once you've checked both these for a tag and you've run this through an or loop in order to check if either one has this tag, go ahead and pass this into a branch. Now, if this branch returns true, we're going to want to return our function right now, and we're going to want to pass through true into that Boolean output that we had set up earlier. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with functions, whenever we run a return node, it'll actually end our function right then and right there, meaning that anything that should have normally come afterwards is simply not going to happen, which is why we're running our return value at this point. So by running this return node, it's going to simply return that we have hit a wall and it's just going to end everything right there. Now on the completed end of our for each loop, we're going to want to again run a return node, but this time we're going to return false. 
This is because if we've managed to get through our entire for each loop, then we've supposedly not found any object that has this wall tag between our hand and our head. And therefore there is presumably no wall between them. Now, if you would like, you can actually end this right here and you can be all done with this function. However, for testing purposes for this tutorial, I'm also going to draw a debug sphere if we did find something with this wall tag. This is just to give us something so that we were able to see that our function is in fact acting correctly and the exact same that we want. Once all this is done, we just need to be able to run our function. So returning back into the event graph, I'm going to go ahead and get our event tick. And then I'm going to run this function twice. I'm going to pass through our motion controller, one for each of these functions that we're running. And with that, everything is complete. We're now able to check if we have a wall between our hand and our head. And this gives us a very simple and easy way to check to see if our player is sticking a hand through a wall and trying to cheat on, on their enemies or even some of their teammates. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And also I'll give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.